Hello everybody, I am Dr. Sneha and welcome back to the Perio Hub. So today we are going to discuss the third part of the periodontal ligament where we will be discussing about its composition and the functions. Now as we all know, periodontal ligament is a part of the connective tissue. Uh, so if this a portion right here is the epithelium, then this is the connective tissue and underlining the connective tissue we have the alveolar bone. And this space right here between the alveolar bone and the root cementum comprises the periodontal ligament space and it is a part of the connective tissue. So as with any connective tissue, the periodontal ligament comprises of fibers, cells and other substances. So coming on first to the fibers, we have spoken in great detail about periodontal fibers in the previous broadcast and I will be linking that video somewhere on the screen. So there we discussed the three types of fibers which are the principal group, the elastic group and the sharpie group. The second component are the cells. So there are numerous cells which are present in the periodontal ligament which facilitate the healthy functioning of the tissue itself and apart from that the other agents such as blood vessels uh, nervous innovations and lymphatics are also seen in the periodontal ligament space. So let's discuss about the cells of the periodontal ligament. So the first type of cell we'll be seeing are, are the fibroblasts. So as the term suggests, fibroblasts help in the production of fibers. So they help in the collagen production and they occupy 25 to 30 percent of the volume space of the periodontal ligament and basically because they help in the production of collagen fibers uh, uh, they are responsible for the formation and remodeling of the periodontal ligament space. The second subset of cells that we will be talking about are the epithelial cell rests of malaises. So uh, epithelial cell rests of malaises are remnants of the Hertwig's epithelial root sheath and they are present as cells or strands attached to the cementum surface. Uh, and uh, in certain cases these epithelial cell rests of malaises can undergo calcification and they produce cementicles which are embedded in the periodontal ligament space. Uh, again, epithelial cell rests of malaises help to maintain the width of the periodontal ligament. The third cell type that we'll talk about are the osteoblast and the osteoclast. Now, the term osteo is synonym uh, with bone. So, osteoblast cells are cells which are derived from the mesenchymal stem cells and they differentiate and form the mature osteoblast which then help in bone deposition. On the other hand, osteoclasts are cells which are derived from the hemopoietic stem cells. So they basically come from the blood lineage and they differentiate from monocytes and ultimately produce the mature osteoclast which is responsible for the bone resorption. So osteoblasts help in bone formation and osteoclasts help in bone resorption. Now in similar lines, the next subset of cells are the cementoblasts and the cementoclast. Now as with osteoblasts, these were present along the alveolar bone. Whereas the cementoblasts are seen along the cementum surface. If we consider this diagrammatic view, this is the dentine, this is the root cementum. So uh, cementoblasts are associated with root cementum. They are derived from the dental follicle and they help to repair the resorbed cementum. So basically they help in deposition of the cementum. Now on the other hand, cementoclasts are not usually seen in case of uh, healthy teeth. They are only seen in pathologic condition where the teeth is in extreme stress uh, and the presence of cementoclast causes external root resorption. Now the next uh, uh, subset of cells we will be talking about are the defense cells. And in case of periodontal ligament, there are three major defense cells that are important. So we have the macrophages and the eosinophils. So these two set of cells causes phagocytosis of the invading microorganisms and the foreign objects. Whereas the third cell, which is the mast cells, are cells which are associated with the blood vessels. And the mechanism of action is slightly different. So when these mast cells are activated, they cause the release of chemical substances from these vesicles and these chemical substances are uh, histamine and heparin and further they cause anaphylaxis to 
occur. So the last type of cells which are seen in case of periodontal ligament are the progenitor cells or the periodontal stem cells. Now there is a lot of research that is being conducted in the uh, field of uh, stem cell work and C.O. et al who uh, isolated the periodontal stem cell and he uh, saw that these stem cells ha had high clonogenicity that means they could differentiate into various cell lineages so they could produce muscle cells, blood cells, liver cells and intestinal cells. So these stem cells have high regenerative property and there is a lot of research that is being conducted in the stem cell area. So next we'll be talking about is the blood supply and the uh, lymphatic drainage. So coming on to the blood supply, the periodontal ligament is supplied by the branches from three major sources. So first we have the dental branches. So these are the branches which enter into the apical foramen and supply the pulp. But before entering into the apical foramen, they also give branches which lead to the periodontal ligament. The second type of branch uh, are called as the interradicular branches. Uh, these are the branches which supply the alveolar bone and they also supply the periodontal ligament by passing through the cribriform plate of the alveolar bone. So both the dental and the interradicular branches supply the apical third of the root whereas uh, the third type of branch which is also called as the interdental branches uh, supply the coronal aspect. So they basically uh, arise near the alveolar crest and they supply the coronal aspect of the periodontal ligament. Now the lymphatics follow the uh, path of the blood vessel and drain in the same fashion. Coming on to the nerve supply, so the PDL is supplied by the dental branches of the alveolar nerve. These branches reach the uh, periodontal ligament either through the apical foramen right here or they penetrate the cribriform plate and enter into the periodontal ligament space. Apart from that, periodontal ligament is also supplied by a rich supply of receptors. So the, re the cell body of these re receptors are present in the trigeminal ganglion and we'll be talking about these receptors a bit late. So with this, we start off with our second part of the seminar wherein we'll discuss about the functions of the periodontal ligament. So the functions of the periodontal ligament can be broadly put into five categories. So first we have the eruptive function, the physical function, the formative and remodeling function, nutritive and ultimately the sensory function. So first let's talk about the eruptive function and here we see the role of the ligament fibroblast. So ligament fibroblast play a very important role in active tooth eruptions to occur and any changes in the shape and orientation of these fibroblasts will bring about changes in the way the tooth erupts into the oral cavity. The second and the most important function of the periodontal ligament is the physical function. So the periodontal ligament uh, forms a soft tissue casing and it protects the underlying blood vessels and the nerve supply from any kind of injury. So this can be compared to the casing of our mobile. So this case of our mobile prevents the mobile from being uh, spoiled when it falls down. Second important physical function here is the transmission of the occlusal forces. Uh, which is uh, acting on the tooth to the bone. So the periodontal ligament would act as a shock absorbent and uh, it will transmit these forces onto the alveolar bone. Now this is done via two theories. So uh, we have the tensional theory and second theory is the viscoelastic theory. So let's first discuss about the tensional theory. So in case of the tensional theory, the periodontal ligament acts as a primary agent for the displacement of forces. So normally the periodontal ligaments are wavy in nature and when forces are applied onto the tooth, these wavy periodontal ligament would unfold itself and straighten and this causes the transmission of forces into the alveolar bone which further undergoes elastic deformation. So according to this theory, the periodontal ligament acts primarily for the transmission of forces to the alveolar bone. Now, talking about the second theory, which is the viscoelastic theory, this is a bit more complex as compared to the tensional theory and in this particular theory, the fibers play a secondary role and it is the extracellular fluid which is present in the periodontal ligament which plays the primary role. 
so according to this theory when forces act on to the tooth the extracellular fluid which is present in the periodontal ligament space is pushed outside into the alveolar bone via the cribriform plate so once the extracellular fluid is pushed the periodontal ligament will absorb the shock and they would tighten so they will tighten in this particular area now because of the tightening of this periodontal ligament the blood vessels of the periodontal ligament will undergo stenosis uh, stenosis basically means that the diameter of the blood vessels which were large now become very thin and there is less blood flow within the blood vessel of the periodontal ligament now as a result of this there is arterial back pressure that happens and there is pooling of the blood so there is a ballooning of the blood vessel in the alveolar bone which further causes the replenishment or the movement of the extracellular fluid from the alveolar bone into the periodontal ligament space again so this is the viscoelastic theory in which the periodontal ligament fibers play a secondary role whereas the extracellular fluid play, plays a primary role so the third function of the periodontal ligament is the formative and remodeling function so previously we spoke about the cementoblasts we uh, we spoke about the periodontal ligament fibroblast and the osteoblast so these uh, cells will produce cementum uh, collagen fibers and alveolar bone respectively and thus they help in the formation and remodeling of the periodontal ligament space the fourth function that we'll talk about is the nutritive function now the periodontal ligament has a rich vascular supply which provides nutrition to the al alveolar bone to the gingiva and to the cementum of the teeth so the last function of the periodontal ligament is the sensory function now for example if we chew food we can always differentiate from a soft food say a banana as compared to when we chew on a crispy substance like chips so this differentiation is brought about by certain receptors which are present in the periodontal ligament space so these receptors are firstly the free nerve endings uh, these are basically uh, they carry the pain sensation the second type of receptors are the mesner's corpuscles these are basically mechano receptors which are seen in the middle third of the root the third receptors are the raffney like mechano receptors so these are again mechano receptors like mesner's corpuscles but these are seen in the apical area of the root and finally we have the fourth receptor which are the spindle like pressure and vibratory receptors so these are receptors which are usually seen along the periodontal ligament fibers itself and the cell bodies of all these receptors are located within the trigeminal ganglion so to quickly summarize what we just saw in this particular video we spoke about two aspects first we spoke about the composition of the periodontal ligament where uh, we saw that we can uh, i uh, put it into three categories fibers cells and other uh, substances so fibers we discussed in the previous broadcast as the principal fibers the sharpie the elastic fibers we we discussed a set of six cells associated with the periodontal ligament and ultimately we saw uh, other substances like blood vessels and uh, lymphatics and nerve supply to the periodontal ligament then we spoke about the functions of the periodontal ligament where we first saw about the eruptive function then we spoke about the physical function and we uh, spoke about two theories the tensional theory and the viscoelastic theory uh, we saw the formative and remodeling function the nutritive and ultimately the sensory function where we spoke about the four different types of receptors which are present so with this i conclude my part 3 broadcast on periodontal ligament do check out the part 1 and part 2 videos as well for better overall understanding and if this video was helpful give it a big thumbs up and click the subscribe button i'll be back soon with my next video and until we meet next take good care of yourself this is perio hub signing off